most important things in a barbel's life is food. The amount of food they can eat is quite incredible, hence the rather large bucket. I love to just bait areas like this, watch the fish coming over them. Apart from the fact I just love watching the fish. But then I keep doing it for quite some time. I like them to get competitive with each other. And then when I finally decide to fish, they don't all spook as soon as I hook one. They're all so busy competing with each other. That's the way I like to do it. So I'm gonna start putting some pellet in and see whether I can get some reaction from these fish. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but the whole process is, trust me, so worthwhile can make the difference between one and then wondering why you don't get another and just steadily catching fish throughout the day. Which I'm sure is what we all really like to do. They're already clouding the water up. <laughs> Beautiful. But the trouble usually come in first and then you keep feeding, the barb will come in and then they will push the chub off. One of the ever-burning questions is how do you fish for barbel when you've got lots of chub? Uh, pretty difficult to be honest. <laughs> I shovel in loads of pellet. In this bucket, I will put this bucket full in in a day. A lot of people use one little bag please, just go and treat yourself, buy a load, invest. And I'll use a scoop because oddly enough I find that a lot of pellet going in doesn't spook fish, they come to the noise. Catapult of pellet going in, a little bit suspicious, they've kind of heard that before. But then to Split the difference. I mean, these, these pellets are sort of quite small. They go down fairly slowly, whereas a boilie will go down much quicker. So the advantage of the boilie is not only that it gets down to the, through the chub, it gets down to the barbell a little bit quicker, but they're that much, when they're round, they drop into all the little crevices. You know, if that was the rocks on the bottom, they all drop into little gaps like that. And chub have that big blunt mouth. They don't have those prehensile lips like a carp or a barbel has that can get in there and suck those back out. So a lot of them will drop down in amongst that gravel with its coarse gravel or in this rocky bottom as it is here. And the chub will get really frustrated going around trying to get them. They'll get the odd ones, but these ones that have fallen right down in the gap, they just can't get them. Along comes Mr. Barbel and just quite happily sucks them all out. So that's one of the ways that I try to select the barbel when I've got barbel and chub in my swim. One of the other ways is just to keep feeding because barb will get quite aggressive. If you keep putting bait in and they're really hooked onto it, they will kick the chub out of the way in the end. Again, it's almost back to that sort of baiting pyramid thing. Um, the barb will dominate the swim and the longer you can keep the pellet going in, the more the barb will do it. I will bait two, three, four swims and just keep going back and putting the pellet in and all the boily, whichever you think is going to turn them on the most. of a bit of time and quite a bit of bait and suddenly the whole world's a better place. Suddenly today's a good day. Well, this is my very simple, non-complicated, does most things up here on my river barbel rig. It's a pound and three quarter Tesco of rod, a real nice little wheel full of 10 pound line, which is then attached to a lead core leader. 
I know people sort of frown about those these days, but up here, the bottom is so rocky, and it's that bit between the lead and the first bit of the main line that gets all the abrasion across the rocks. So I find this works great. Nothing can be worse than losing fish, so I stick with this. It has a very nice little breakaway arrangement on the end. It's a simple thing that just wants the fish, if the fish gets snagged and the, the lead gets caught, he just pulls it and the, the lead's away, or the feeder, whichever you wish. There's a nice little quick release swivel on that, so I can change the lead for either a bigger lead or the feeder, depending on the swim that I'm fishing, depending on the, the method that I decide to use in that swim. I don't use particularly big leads. I'm an old-fashioned boy, that's only an ounce, and I find that sentence, that's a, a size 11 on the end, it sets a size 11 perfectly well. Some swims, you might want to put a bigger lead on for the flow or whatever, but most of the time I'm fishing downstream. Barb are going to come along behind it, pick it up, drop back slightly, bang, they're hooked. The nice other thing about this is, you can simply slide that rubber off of there and change your hook length. It's just got a simple little link swivel there, which once you push the rubber over, there's no way that can come off again. It also stops this tangling quite effectively as well. Then I've got what some people might consider a fairly long hook link. My hook links vary from six inches to six foot. Most of the time up here, if you want to catch the chub, you shorten it. If you want to catch the barbel, you lengthen it. And then on the end, it's a simple little size 11 barbel hook, two little pellets, that's it. It needs nothing more complicated than that. was lucky, do a little bit less lucky, a bit more skillful, plus the right time of the day. You can sit there all afternoon sometimes and these little beauties will just completely ignore you and suddenly it's tea time. Beautiful. Almost the twin of your mate.